Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are. It is Monday once again. This is February the 3rd, 2020. And this is the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 32. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, two of my best artist friends. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody out there. All right. Welcome, folks, to the Artist Friends Podcast. And this week, the theme of the show that I picked, we might we might talk about some of our uh, recommended videos, but the theme that I uh, decided on was uh, funding or trying to find funds to uh, fund our art studio practice. You know, uh, buying supplies, entering exhibitions. There's always uh, some kind of a exhibition fee between fifteen, twenty-five dollars or so, and we have to do that to get out to the world to advance our career. However, coming up, if your sales are light, coming up with the money to do that can get very frustrating. And I thought about we would uh, share with our listeners some of our ways of funding. Uh, one area that seems to be the more traditional method for artists is uh, obtaining grants. And there are all kinds of the grant opportunities out there. But what I've found, at least, unless you uh, circulate in the kind of like the economic circles or unless you are part of several uh, artist organizations, which also require fees uh to qualify for the grants it can be uh, a little intimidating and uh, threatening at time diane have you had any success with uh, obtaining grants to uh, fund your uh your practice um i don't no, i've never gotten a grant i've never even um tried to get one i've looked into them a couple times but it seems it just seemed to me at the times that i did it i didn't have enough um work or um, enough of a focus maybe of what they were looking for. It's hard to find a grant, or at least I felt it was hard to find a grant that um, where they were looking for the type of artist that I am. That's and right. you, you really need to match that up or you're not going to get picked. So it's like yeah. it takes a lot of time to research all the different um, 
places that have to do grants and it takes time to um, really analyze what your own work's about and be able to articulate that in connection with the grant so that they think you might be a good fit. Um, there are people that you can hire that uh, will help you write grants. Um, but there again, you know, it's once again, you gotta pay them. You gotta pay them to do it. Yeah, money of so, everything. We're talking funds again. Constantly, yeah, so it's. Have you have you uh, applied for any grants, Constance? Or no, uh, and for that very reason, I mean, it's you've got to sift through all the grants and find something that matches to you or what you were, what you're doing at the time, and and uh, then you've got to write everything up. And I'm not a writer. I'm a painter. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, what, you know. what you, well, both of you has, has uh, described is what I also encountered. I got, uh, you know, a course that we had taken and uh, there was some of the other artist members were, you know, excited and, and explaining and talking about grants. Said, There's so many grants out there. Well, so I actively researched found several sources. It's time consuming. When you read through the requirements and everything, a lot of them are, you know, you have a big, public art project or, or something like that. And I'm just not into that. I, uh, I just, no, I, I don't think that I would, uh, the kind of art that I do a lot of times, like what Diane said, uh, it never, uh, it never matched up, or at least I didn't think it would match up, you know? So then and I, you can always try to do, do what, you know, find a grant that you think you can do and maybe write, write something up and to get in into it i mean something that's along the lines of what you yeah, paint it's not out you've got to sift not, through all those all those things well i'm not yeah i'm not completely you know discounting and saying it's not for me completely because i think uh someday it will if i maybe i just need to put a little more effort you know into the research you know of it and everything um but another option uh, early last year, I had uh, enrolled in a course with the Brandon Carey, you know, and, and uh, he was talking about take, uh, taking another approach about for obtaining uh, funding for your studio practice was like join a uh, nonprofit organization. And usually when you join organization, art organizations like that, uh, you obtain the uh, members list and the sponsors and then writing a, an, a, an appeal to the sponsors for your project and everything. And it, uh, that kind of appealed to me, but then again, it comes back to, uh, if you're not real active in the organization, you probably, you know, your letters would probably could be ignored, you know, and, and it, it was a good idea, but at the same time, it didn't, it didn't quite, uh, you know, seem to work out. However, the concept of asking for funding from, uh, your art fans and art collectors that did appeal to me. And I had, had a, uh, moderate success, um, uh, I run the internet radio station and uh, I, yeah, I broadcast old time radio. I've been doing it now. This is now I'm starting my 20th year. And as a result, I have a mailing list of about 150 uh, members, fans, you know, that I send out notifications. So I sat down and I wrote a letter and an appeal of asking for donations to support my daily studio operations uh, with the appeal that, you know, I am, I was, you know, cause one thing that uh, Brandon said is you have to be very honest and very upfront and vulnerable. So I, you know, I'm doing this art for the sake of my daughters to so leave a legacy for my daughters. And I, that was the, the angle that I used. And I, at the same time, I was also working on a uh, graphic novel. And so I offered as a gift, you know, for a certain amount, you know, a, uh, a signed copy of the uh, graphic novel. 
And I ended up from those letters over a two month period. I sent, I sent them out three different times. I, I did obtain about $300, you know, in funding. That's nothing to uh, get excited about except for, you know, a $10 or $20. That's not bad. Yeah. A $10 or $20 donation, you know, that buys me some more paintbrushes, some more paint, you know, uh, that's a, that's a fee to, to enter in a, uh, an art contest to pay this fee. So it was, uh, very, uh, and it was just, it was just heartwarming that these folks, you know, considered my art to be that important that they were willing you know, to fund it. Now I'm getting ready to prepare another letter for this year for some fun. However, this time, because of my uh, recent success with the latter part of 2019 and now going to 220, you know, I've won awards, I've entered a contest, I've been exhibited in Europe. I'm going to use that as a, this is what your grant, this is what your money did for me last year. You see, I, and now I have something to really show them. This is how, this is how you have funded me. And I'm going to, you know, ask for another appeal. So working with uh, just rather than a Pacific grant or a Pacific amount of money for a Pacific project, like a lot of the grants you want, just to obtain donations for your daily fund, for your daily operations can be very useful if you appeal to your collectors and to your fans. Have you two tried anything like this or, you know, for your, uh, you know, well, I set up Kickstarter and then I set up, um, Patreon, but I, that's about as far as I got with it. And I didn't go back and uh, Kickstarter to me, doesn't seem like it would be the, really the thing that I need to do. I need to probably do Patreon. Yeah. Fun, and, yeah concentrate more on Patreon. I also have, have a Patreon page and, uh, but other than that, I've been selling I've junk. Very moderate, <laughs> moderate success. The highest number of members I've had on Patreon is 25 at one time. It's now down to 14. I mean, it, it goes up and down, you know? And so, yeah, I get, I get a little bit of money every month. And believe me, I'm not complaining. Those, four, those 14 dedicated people, I mean, some of them only $1, some of them $5, some of them $10. That helps. That's better than a sharp stick in your eye. <laughs> Got it. And that helps. So I am not knocking. Those people have been <laughs> and, and believe me, that little one dollar, that five dollar, uh, when you need to buy something for your art or when you need the money to enter in a competition, uh, hey. It's helpful. <laughs> it, it's you know, it, it, it's it's very helpful. Um one of the other th things I came I recently came across a site from uh, from LinkedIn. A, a fellow sent me a message on LinkedIn, and I had never heard of these folks. And I'm going to here it one, is one two three sponsor. Is that the name of it? Yep, uh, one two three sponsor. They're a uh, uh, one a a European organization, and what they do it's it's both for sponsors and for folks who projects not just artists they have a lot of artists on there but uh public projects and you know any organization or any individual that is needing money for you know a a, a project and yeah it's the for our listeners it's it's called uh one two three sponsor dot is that dot one or dot com i can't even read this dot one yeah dot one one two, one two three sponsors dot one and, dot one. Oh. and it uh um you know they I have heard of dot one before i haven't signed up for these folks so the jury is out as to if it's useful or not but i just it struck me as as an interesting uh, method of uh, obtaining funding because then you can you can look at some of the you know the projects you know, the current projects and see what, uh, what people are asking money for. And it's most, it's been mostly in the you know, Europeans, but, uh, but yeah, like here's an art. Okay. Painting exhibi exhibition in Dubai. And this guy is, is, you know, 
uh, he's only asking for, uh, I gotta put, put my glasses on, I can't read. <laughs> he's only asking for 4,000 euros or, you know, whatever. And, uh, uh, I guess he just, you know, started it up and there's, there's quite a, quite a few art, you know, on here. And then the sports activities, but the way it's set up from what I read over, over the material is you, uh, you set you sign up, sign and it's, it's free to sign up. They have a higher level of uh, pricing if you want to receive, uh, uh, more information, but just the basic, you said a basic profile up, uh, you have to exp uh, explain, you know, what you're needing money for and then the amount and then they advertise across the internet and for uh, sponsors, they can be individuals or it can be uh, companies and uh, you have to, uh, they do not collect any percentage of the funds whatsoever and uh, all the money will go to you, but you, and then uh, there's also a review system where uh, you can, if somebody offers, you know, to send you money, there's a, if they've been on, on the system before, it gives a review, you know, of their, you know, do they follow through with their promises and vice versa, the individual's project, do they follow through? So it's a good, it's, it's another method for obtaining funding for your studio practice, but where you do not necessarily have to have something like a grant or like a grant, grant operation, like a major public service project or something like that. It can be just for the enter like this fellow. He wants to, you know, get some money to enter in an exhibition. And that exactly is what uh, <coughs> has attracted me because now with the uh, advance of uh, my career, I've been, I've obtained uh, uh, invitations from three different galleries overseas, but I don't have the money to pay for the shipping costs. You know? So I'm thinking of, of something I'm going to, you know, eventually uh, make the time to set up a project for a Pacific uh, exhibition. And I have to, these are all been recent ones, but I have to, you know, look for uh, in the future to give myself time and to, uh, to see how this works. You know, it's, it's, it's just an, a, a, another option other than, you know, the, uh, I think with this combined with the uh, uh, standard request for donations, uh, it might give me a chance. What do you guys think about that? I think all um, resources are worth checking into. <clears throat> you don't know until you try. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that, when I came across this site, that's what prompted me for the theme. And at the same time, I also received an invitation to, for a gallery who wants to represent me in Italy. But I don't have the money to send the art there. So it's, it is so frustrating and disheartening that. You well, know, couldn't you put that on Kickstarter or just on Patreon? Um, well, those, yeah, I, Kickstarter is really, 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 Kickstarter is really difficult. A lot of the Kickstarter, uh, GoFundMe and some of those other crowdfunding sources, you have to be really, really, uh, active. And I mean, you have to really have a large social yeah. media presence, you know? And uh, then again, the, it's a Pacific project, you know, or something. And when you're just wanting money just to help fund your, uh, your daily operation, you know, uh, these, uh, a Patreon is a good deal for that. Uh, ask us a donation campaign is, is like that. And this one, two, three sponsor might be, might be an option, I think. And, uh, but it does, uh, it, it takes a little bit of time in, in, in advance, you know, to set these up. Anyhow, that was, uh, that's what prompted me for, uh, you know, talking about funding our studio practice. Okay. 
let's uh, let's finish this up with a discussion a little bit about the uh, the videos and uh, one video in particular I came across was a video from Gary V about how to use your age to your advantage <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys think about that? Yeah, he was interviewing with an older gentleman, and I, I thought it was very interesting. Well, he's not that much older than us <laughs> or me. But, yeah, I like the concept because the uh, the age group of people in our age bracket is starting to really grow. And so, like you said, when people get – disconnected from the first job they ever had and sometimes they have a hard time reestablishing in themselves in a new environment to move on from that that devastation you know of losing that first job that they were you know probably went to school for or whatever you know but I think that I've had to restart my life so many times that I'm kind of used to it so it's yeah. frustrating, but you, you have right. to learn to roll with the punches, as my stepfather used to say all the time. Yeah. Just get yourself yeah, I think, up. I think, people that haven't, and, and yeah, go. I, think, I think people that haven't kept up with technology are having the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we didn't grow up with computers. So mm -mm. if you didn't keep up with the computers and all the new technology and social media and everything that's going on now, yeah, and, and you had to just all of a sudden like pick up. Behind. Yeah, if you had all of a sudden pick up on that, all that stuff. Geez. And that's like with the internet and everything. It, so me, much. It, it was a, <clears throat> it, it was, it was a natural, a, a natural transition for me. Uh, many, the younger folks I encounter, they're because I'm, you know, especially I'm the age of their uh, parents, <laughs> a lot of, and they, uh, they are surprised as to how much I know. In fact, I know more than them. You know. You know well, I was, I consider myself very blessed because when I was in the military, uh, communications was my skill and communicating on a worldwide basis, um, communicating via telegraph, via, uh, teletypes, digital and, uh, and audio and, uh, talking with people from around the world. And using abbreviated, we used we used to have what we call operation signals, you know, codes. Whenever the internet came about, and when I got out of the navy, for me it was a natural transition. It was the same thing. I'm doing the same thing I did when I was 18 years old, except for I was doing it on a government for the government, but now I'm doing it on my own. I mean, messaging and uh, uh, communicating uh, via voice and video. These were all things I did when I was in the, you know, in the military. And so it, and understanding how a network, you know, operates around the world. Uh, these were things that, uh, you know, the, the internet came about because of, you know, the uh, military operations and, you know, everything. In fact, the internet itself was originally the backbone of it was uh, built by the military and the national science foundation to withstand a nuclear attack. It was a cold war, uh, uh, system, <laughs> you know, and then it grew into what, you know, a lot of, a lot of the younger folks don't understand that they don't, you know, that was the, it's original purpose. That's why it's so, uh, uh powerful now, you know, and, and, uh, is, you know, able to spread throughout the world because the, it, the, the basic fundamentals of how the internet <clears throat> operate was uh developed you know back in the 60s and 70s and 80s during for the you know for, for the uh, cold war so that communications could continue regardless if there was a nuclear attack or not you know so um in that sense i i, I feel blessed you know and um the focus of what appealed to me and with gary's uh interview with this fellow was the ideal that as an older person, you have skills and a certain amount of wisdom that the younger folks don't have. They have the technical skills. So if you can get yourself into a mentorship type arrangement, not so much as, as, as being a boss,
but as an inter exchange and in sharing, they can teach you, but you can also teach them. And I like that approach, you know, very, very much so. Now, yeah. as artists, you know, it's the within the 21st century, we have to learn the technical aspects. We have to learn. So if we can with, and then there are so many younger artists, you know, coming up, not all of them, but quite a few of them are very, very smart when it comes to, you know, computers and technology and everything. And, and we can develop relationships through the internet, through social media with these folks. I think it could be a very, uh, fruitful in a very uh, 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 enjoyable situation. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think there's a lot to be drawn from both sides. I mean, if something happens to the computers and things can't be done on the computer, the whole younger generation is going to be lost. They're not going to know how to do things by hand, you know, the old way, by hand. And vice, you know, vice versa with the, with the technology advancing. It's, it's hard to keep up with it all, but you kind of have to if you want to survive in the, in the world today. So yeah. it, it can be really a win-win for both sides, you know, both the younger and the older generations to work together. And like Gary's <laughs> glitch is, is to get people's egos out of the way. Get rid of the ego, you know, and uh, humble yourself. Be vulnerable. And it would be so enjoyable, so advantageous, you know, and everything. So I hope as a message to our listeners, especially some of our younger listeners, hey, you know, don't necessarily think that that older person uh, is just a little wacko. <laughs> or doesn't know anything. <laughs> yeah. You may be surprised at the same time for our older listeners. Don't think those kids are only interested in, you know, and, Drinking beer and partying. No, they, uh, they're pretty. There's a lot of chill, a lot of young people now, David, just blow my mind because they've got themselves so together by 20, 25. You know, and I just, when I was 20 and 25, I didn't have it together at all. <laughs> you know, I didn't know where I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. But I think it's great that these young people are so motivated and they have goals. So if you're a young artist, if you are a young artist, a, a uh, young uh, listener to this podcast, here's an open invitation. Send me an email, cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com, and you are invited. Come on our show as a, as a guest. We'll be glad to help promote your art, promote an exhibi exhibition, and at the same time, maybe you can share some of your uh, technology with us, and we'll try, to, we'll try to share some of our wisdom with you. You know, it, uh, that's what this is all about. Artists helping artists. I think that's going to be about it for this episode 32 for February the 3rd, Monday, February the 3rd, 2020. And I've been chattering away with uh, my friend, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Thank you so much for joining me. Good night, Diane. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Constance. Good night, uh, Clyde and Diane. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night, everybody, and thank you for listening. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. 
This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.